Hello, and thank you for watching this short recording from Compass Drone designed to help you get familiar with airspace. This video was recorded in March of 2021, so the information was accurate at that time, and we'll try to keep it up to date. Here at Compass Drone, we teach a very successful three-day Part 107 course, and that's designed for two things. To number one, help you pass the, the 107 test or the one the unmanned aircraft general exam. But number two, also help you operate as a confident, successful pilot after the class. We also get feedback from the class and a lot of the attendees have said a couple of days is not enough to get familiar with the Federal Aviation Administration, their airspace. It's, as you can see by this map, it can get very complex. So this video is designed to give you a little head start on the class and get you a little bit familiar with airspace. It's not comprehensive, but it's gonna help you get more out of our course and understand airspace better. And really the root cause of this problem is that we're trying to depict three-dimensional airspace on a two-dimensional map, you know, a flat paper map. So there's a lot of detail. Every, every line and symbol has significance and we're gonna get you started on it. This is important to a drone pilot because under the Title 14 CFR, Code of Federal Regulations, Part 107, you guys, once you pass that test, you can operate in Class Golf airspace, Class G, uh, with no further communication or permissions, but in Class Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo, you may need additional coordination. So you need to understand the differences between all those airspaces. And we're going to go through them one by one. But again, trying to depict a three-dimensional airspace on a two-dimensional map. Class A, let's not worry about Class Alpha. That's up top here depicted in red. It starts at 18,000 above mean sea level. So even if you're on top of a Colorado 14er and you fly your drone up to 400 feet, you're still not in Class Alpha airspace. You'd have to climb most of the way up Denali or Mount McKinley, it's now called Denali, uh, and then launch a drone, and then you're in Class Alpha airspace, but that's pretty rare occurrence, so that's all we're gonna say about Class Alpha. Class Bravo is something you should focus more on. This is your big um, international airports. These are very important, and it's very important that you know what you're doing around these international airports. So on the left here is the three-dimensional, um, as an as airplane comes from Salt Lake to Denver, it's going to enter the Class Bravo and it's going to be protected all the way to the runway. And then as it heads off to Chicago, it's going to stay in this Class Bravo and head out to Chicago. So you can see on the right here, this is two dimensional <coughs> near the airport. Uh, this circle is, is uh, it's about seven miles wide to the north and 12 to the south. But right here next to Denver International. You can see this number 120 over surface. That means this airspace is protected down to the surface. But as you get further away from the airport, uh, there's a floor of 7,000 feet, a floor of 8,000 feet and 10,000. So that's, that's what these circles indicate. They're trying to show you this three-dimensional class Bravo airspace on a two-dimensional map. But as that airplane comes from Salt Lake, he's protected in Bravo. He lands, picks up some passengers, and takes off for Chicago and never really leaves the protection of Class Alpha and Class Bravo airspace. So when you think Class B, Class Bravo airspace, these are airports depicted in blue on the FAA sectional map. These thick blue lines surrounding major international airports, that's a dead giveaway for Class Bravo airspace and near the airport, it's gonna be controlled to the surface, which is where drone operators operate. So I've been talking about Denver, some other great examples of Class Bravo airports, Class B is Dallas. That's a big airport. Atlanta is a huge international hub and Chicago, another big, huge international airports, tons of commercial jetliners coming in and out all day, every day. Um, so they need to protect this airspace to the surface and that's what the Bravo airspace is. So class B is a big um, 
busy airport and is depicted in blue. Class Bravo. So again, just to kind of help you guys memorize this, Class B airport, Bravo airspace depicted in blue on these FAA sectional charts controlled to the surface near the airport. Then it's got these tiers as airplanes leave the airport. When you see this thick blue line, think Class B airspace, think Bravo airport. Similar to Bravo is a Class Charlie airspace. It's depicted in thick magenta lines. So looking at the profile view, Bravo was kind of complex, multiple tiers maybe. Charlie can be less complex. And Colorado Springs is a great one. Uh, a lot of, lot of traffic, a lot of, a lot of major jet liners coming in and out. But on the left here, the 3D view, airplanes coming to Charlie and leave Charlie and they're protected here. Um, you can see Colorado Springs within a radius of the airport is controlled to the surface. But as you get out away from the airport, um, this class Char Charlie airspace is from 10,200 to 8,500. So that outer ring here, here it is 10,200 to 7,500. Is this upper shelf of, of the wedding cake over there. But Class Charlie, very busy airports. You definitely need to uh, coordinate before you operate a drone in there. Some great examples of Charlie airports, again, Colorado Springs, Colorado, San Antonio, Texas. Uh, that one's one of the more normal shaped Class Charlie airspaces with the circular magenta lines. San Jose, there's a ton of airports and military bases nearby. So they've kind of adjusted the airspace to just protect pretty much the direction of the runway. So you can see airplanes, commercial airline transport pilots can enter Class Charlie and land and also leave Class Charlie. Doesn't matter which way, but they're protected as they take off and land from San Jose. And that's where that Class Charlie with the magenta lines is shaped how it is. It's controlled to the surface right there near the airport. But as you leave the airport, it's uh, 4,000 feet at, at the top and 1,500 feet at the bottom. And then as you get it to that outer tier, it's 6,000 feet at the top, 3,000 feet at the bottom. <clears throat> Oklahoma City is very busy. It's got two Clash Charlie airports right next to each other. So you can see they've adjusted the airspace to accommodate each other. And to complicate it further, there's a, a different airport right down there, which we'll talk about next. But focusing on Class Charlie, very busy airport still. And Class C airspace, Class Charlie airspace is depicted in magenta. Class Delta airspace uh, can be very air busy airports. Some are not that busy, but I would say on the whole, most are busy. Class Delta airports are represented by a dashed blue line. And the Delta, the shape of the Delta airspace can be simple and, but they are also tailored to the airport operations. Centennial Airport is a super busy Class Delta airspace in Colorado. You can see it has three runways, a lot of student activity. But the key about Class Delta is this blue line is stapled to the ground, indicating that this airspace is controlled to the surface. That's other, you know, Bravo had the uh, upper and lower, Delta does not. It is stapled to the ground. I want you to think of these as blue staples. And this airspace is controlled to the surface. So if you need to operate in there, Delta airspace, you need additional coordination. The upper limit of this delta is, is a little bit hard to find, but it's depicted right here. It's got a minus eight zero. That actually indicates that this airspace is controlled from the surface up to, but not including 8,000 feet. So from the surface to 7,999 feet. That's what that minus indicates. You'll see other deltas. Here's Buckley Air Force Base that's controlled from the surface up to, but not including 7,500, because you can see right here, the Bravo takes over at 7,500. You can't, so this is actually 7,4999, and this is 
7,500. That's where the Delta turns into Bravo airspace. But focusing on Delta airports, it has this dashed blue line. Centennial is a great example. Uh, this Eastern Oregon is interesting. They've actually uh, made a little extension to kind of protect the approach of this probably longer runway, but it's a blue dashed line. So that's Delta airspace. Hector International, uh, pretty round airspace, no problems. You can see Palo Alto, California, very congested, tons of airports right around that bay. So it actually looks like a uh, three quarter symbol or something, but that's to accommodate all the airports around it. So Palo Alto is controlled uh, at the surface up to, but not including 1500 feet because you can see there's a Clash Charlie this magenta right over top of it. So very congested around Palo Alto. Out here, it's actually controlled from the surface up to and including 2,000 feet because there wasn't, oh, there's some Bravo overlying it, but it must there must be a little room there. So Palo Alto, Centennial, when you're thinking class Delta airports or you just can't remember what this blue line is, um, these are other airports so you can gauge size and busyness and might help you remember that class Delta airports are depicted with the dash blue line and they're all controlled to the surface. So class Delta dash blue line. Class Echo is very complex. I wanna keep this video short. So we're not gonna talk about all of the different class echoes. Echo essentially fills in where another airspace is not. So echo can be uh, to the surface on non-towered airports with instrument approaches. Echo can start at 7,000 or 700 feet or echo can start at 1,200 feet. And I'll, I'll touch on it briefly, but you'll need a, a second video to kind of fully understand class echo airspace. The important stuff for a drone pilot, Class Echo, is uh, you want to find the ones that are controlled to the surface because that's where you're going to get in trouble. Cortez, Colorado is a good example. It has a probably a four mile uh, ring around it, and that is magenta staple to the surface. So this is Class Echo to the surface. But they also have a protected instrument approach. So Cortez, Colorado has an echo. Uh, extending northward from it. So that means anywhere in this dash magenta inside of it, you do need additional coordination, which we'll talk about. Don't get thrown off by this uh, magenta dash over here. That's actually a magnetic line of declination. But if you see a magenta dash around an airport, that indicates additional coordination is needed. The other type of echo that might come into play for a drone pilot, let's actually go back to Cortez. The stapled magenta is echo. This fuzzy magenta is also echo, but this starts 700 feet above the ground. And as a drone pilot, you're only going up to 400 feet. So as long as you are following that 400 foot rule, this 700 foot echo is never gonna come into play. But up here, you see a tower that is 318 feet tall. That's where you might run into echo airspace is you're allowed to fly 400 feet over the top of that tower. So you might at, at one point be above 700 feet. You might enter that echo airspace. So just be aware, you, you wanna pay attention to magenta staples, that's echo to the surface. And fuzzy magenta, if you're a tower inspector, definitely pay attention because that starts at 700 feet above the ground. There are a couple others we're going to skip just for efficiencies of this video. And you can actually see this is a Delta airport because it's depicted in blue, blue staples. That's class D, class Delta. It's actually got an echo extension. Um, so you, you might think you need additional coordination in here. You actually do not because it's not attached to the airport, it's walled off. But now we're, we're getting confusing. 
there is another resource for you guys, and that's the FAA Lance Low Altitude Authorization and Notification Capability. They have a much simpler map. So this is that same airport depicted in Lance, and it shows that you do need permission. These green cells, they indicate you can fly here. Um, and if you apply for 200 feet out here, they're gonna give you 200. If you apply for 300 feet in the 200 feet grid, you're not gonna get it. Well, this is a, a simpler way. You notice the echo extension is not depicted because it's it, you don't need additional coordination because it's not attached. So if there's a if you're confused on your sectional, what is happening? Can I operate in this echo extension to this Delta Airport? Uh, a good second check is this FAA Lance map. And there'll be a link to it at the end of this video. But I wanted to also talk about Gulf airspace and keep this video short. Remember, as a once you pass the 107 test, you can operate in class golf without any ATC permission. So golf is down here where drone pilots fly, very low to the ground. And in some places it can go up to 14,500 MSL, but obviously we're restricted as drone pilots to 400 feet above the ground. But golf is your wide open spaces, class G airspace, if there's not a controlled airspace depicted on the map, and again, don't, don't be fooled by that magnetic line of declination. Here on the Wyoming-South Dakota border, it's all Gulf airspace. So uh, your other, you still have to yield the right way to manned aircraft. You still have to stay within 400 feet of the surface, but other than that, you can fly and get some work done. What about that airport uh, in that previous image? Yeah, actually this airport, um, doesn't have any controlled airspace around it. So you could take off and land really near, really close to that airport. It's still Gulf airspace. You're a rated pilot. You have as much right to that airspace as a manned pilot. So that is class Gulf airspace, even though it is near an airport. What about near Bravo airports? Obviously inside this circle, it is controlled to the surface, but out here, uh, not too far, from the airport. This Bravo airspace is from 12,000 feet down to 7,000 feet. So as long as you're under 7,000 feet, that's actually class golf airspace under there. Class golf airspace under 8,000 feet. So even though this looks very uh, confusing and restricted, it's actually class golf underneath of there. And you can operate there as a rated pilot. A few other easy answers on the test and kind of some, some things I've been dodging during this video is the color of the airport. That's an easy uh, question on the test. If the airport is depicted in blue, it, it is a towered airport, probably a busier airport. If the airport is depicted in magenta, it doesn't matter the airspace surrounding it. If the airport's depicted in magenta, it does not have a tower. So towered airport blue, Magenta, no tower. Other easy question that's commonly missed are these blue numbers kind of randomly scattered about these sectional charts. That is the highest obstruction in that latitude longitude grid. So you can actually see there's latitude longitude grids here. And it might help you to look at a, a sectional maybe around sea level. You can see, let's say a pilot took off from this airport by Newport. And as he descend, ascends over the mountains, he needs to climb to 4,400 feet above sea level to clear all the obstructions. There's a little valley here. The tallest thing here is 3,200 feet. As he climbs more mountains, you can see he needs to climb all the way 10,800 feet by the time he reaches this protected wildlife area over here. So these blue numbers are the highest obstruction within the quadrant or this GPS grid, you know, latitude, longitude. Um, there's a little bit of buffer, but that's another easy answer on the test. So just to review, kind of put it all back together, Bravo airports, big blue uh, international airports, definitely need coordination. Class Charlie airports, magenta line, solid magenta line, 
definitely need coordination there, but there are shelves extending away. So you can operate underneath of this class Charlie shelf because it's class golf underneath of that 7,500 foot shelf. Class Delta can still be very busy airports, but the key is uh, the blue stapled line indicates controlled airspace to the surface, Class Delta. Class Echo is a little more complex, but remember Magenta stapled to the surface is controlled to the surface and you need additional coordination. But Gulf is, is rural America. It's also under those Bravo and Charlie shelves and you guys as rated 107 pilots can operate there. So what should you do next before the course? Uh, let's find a sectional chart. The easy way, you can pause the video and type in that link. That's not a lot of fun. A better way to go is just go to fa.gov. In the search box, just type in sectional. And it'll take you right to the sectional aeronautical charts. Scroll down, go to digital downloads. And here's a bunch of them. Um, I would go for P PDF unless you're a mapping professional, then you can go for GeoTIFF. These are huge, they do take a while to download. If you're not sure which sectional map covers your house, there's a sectional chart index. So you see that the Denver sectional covers a lot of New Mexico and Arizona, some Utah, doesn't actually cover all of Denver, that's into the Cheyenne. The Omaha, Omaha sectional actually covers four or five states, uh, but use this sectional index to find your proper sectional. Then you can download it and kind of kind of look it over before the course. Definitely get familiar with the Lance map. The link is provided here. And there is a sectional chart user guide. I guess it's not the most user friendly, but if you see a symbol, you're not sure what it is, you can find it in that sectional chart user guide. And if you have any questions coming up to the class, the best email to reach us at is solutions at compassdrone.com. Thank you for your time.